Okay, so we will, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you for this beautiful grace, the grace to know you, know your word. And today you have taken us, Lord, to a position where uh, you are teaching us about the divine will of after last uh, 700, and, or, or 700 odd days that you have given us the grace, taught us various uh, aspects of your word, of your faith. Uh, in you, uh, of your grace in our lives. And today you have taken us to this position of uh, divine will, uh, to gift of divine will. And Lord, we pray that this grace may uh, deepen in our hearts, that we may live in the grace of divine will. In Jesus' name we pray. And especially we pray, very, very specially pray for uh, Jude as he is leading uh, this, uh, this uh, series. With your grace, we pray that your spirit may lead and guide each one of us as we listen, and especially Jude as he speaks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Brother Jules. Yeah. Let me add a little of prayer of mine also as uh, Brother Anthony always does. So, yeah. uh, give me your, your grace, Lord. Lead me today. Holy Spirit, Lord, be with me. Mother Mary, we need your mantle to cover us this evening because you know how much I've tried to prepare and how much I've been distracted, how much I've been pulled away from you. So with your grace, because without you, dear Lord, as you said, we can do nothing. And with you, we can do all things. So we look forward to your grace, to your leading, to your promptings as we proceed in understanding Louisa Picaretta's Book of Heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, loving Father. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. As it was so, the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. So, friends, let us, let us get going. So, I'll just do a little recap of what we saw since it has been a week since we started this. And uh, this is an ocean I was sharing with Brother Jose. It, it's an ocean and uh, it calls for a lot of, lot of uh, time and understanding to go deep into what Jesus is trying to tell us through Louisa Picaretta. So, and she herself had to go through a lot of problems. We, we saw how she saw, had a, a brief overview of uh, her life how she became a victim soul. So at the young age of 18, she was confined to bed and she remained in bed without food or water, only taking Holy Communion every day till she died at the age of 82. From 18 to 82, for 64 long years, she was confined to bed. And we also saw how God had blessed her uh, without any bed sores, without any other ailments. So the only ailment she had in life was pneumonia, of which she died. So she had those locutions. She was she was living in the dimension, as uh, we have already pointed out. After Mother Mary, who was special, after Adam and Eve were first parents, before their fall, it is only Louisa Picaretta who was brought into this living in the divine. So this, uh, and uh, many people have asked, how is it that so many saints have done, have been there before her? Yes, definitely. But they were doing the divine thing. And the difference is that she was the first one among those of us who were born in original sin. She is the first one to live in the divine. Thing. And she, by the grace of God, has been able to bring to us through her 36 volumes over a period of about 64 years. She has been writing all this and we are going through it. We have just started. So, Jude, uh, one, one, one question I have, I, in, in fact, I have not yeah. really read through it, so I do not so clarify one clarification. So it was through Louisa Piccarata that uh, Jesus revealed about the divine gift of divine will. Is that right? That's, yeah. that, that is the one, right? 
now uh, does it mean that the saints who live uh, has uh, um, un without being re without revealing it lived the divine will they were doing the divine okay they were not living in the divine there's a big difference between doing the they all they all did god's will many of them went through a lot of mortification suffered a lot martyrs gave their lives many others suffered many other things with the stigmatus many of them but they were not living in the divine will in fact jesus himself told to louisa pecorator to heaven and he introduced her to the other saints and said she is the greatest saint just imagine it's incredible jesus himself taking a living person to heaven and telling all those in heaven that she is the greatest so we may ask having known padre pio having known saint anthony of padua so how is it that she is the greatest and many others have done like that yes but she is the chosen one for the grace of divine will Yeah. like the way okay. like the way um, uh, saint faustina is chosen to uh, you know yeah. uh, reveal the divine mercy yeah. she is yeah. one chosen to reveal the divine uh, will of god okay okay uh, so this the book of heaven so that is the 36 volume she went through and it was a big big you know say she was going through an ordeal she suffered she was suffering a victim soul she was Jesus used to put the crown of thorns on her, not physically, all spiritually. But she used to have that pain, and she explains that the crown of thorns we only see in the in the churches. We have the crucifix. We only see a little uh, a little round a ring on Jesus' head, but it was covering his whole head. And how she felt was that she could not even open her mouth because they just cut a bush, a, a thorny bush, and just put it on his head. and then they were beating his head with sticks so thorns were entering his skull his head his eye even she could not open her mouth so that is how jesus felt which we are not able to realize which you know that uh, something which uh, we do not come to know the revelations which came through uh, who was that uh, and catherine emery so that gives but this goes to a deeper level so all those things give tell us about the physical subjects here the basis is the the spiritual subjects which mother mary had during the way of the cross and jesus himself jesus himself told her that my mother suffered as much as i did so i suffered physically she suffered spiritually so these are things which are revealed through luisa pecorata which uh, we have to understand because these are things which are to be till at, at towards the uh, 20th century and jesus himself tells that 20th century was the most evil of all the centuries that is why two chastisements he, he talks about the two world wars two chastisements had to come because they were to make reparation and because of the sufferings of victim souls like luisa picoretta like padre pio and other stigmatists the the pain the suffering of the people was mitigated to a greater extent otherwise it would have been even worse so this is what was revealed to luisa picoretta okay so let's let's uh, get going so it was nice to see you know, some of our, our friends sharing towards the end Uh, Sister Greta Pereira was sharing how she could, you know, during yeah. the trip to Goa, in spite of all the distractions, she was able to, you know, keep in touch with God. That is important. So I welcome all of you. Don't yeah. wait till the end. If yeah. you feel like saying anything or sharing anything with which you would, please, please talk. It's wonderful because the spirit acts in different ways. Yes. So whatever comes to you, please share. Yeah, in fact, one point which I wanted to tell you, a uh, very, in fact, uh, Francis Hogan, who is translating this uh, message, not translating, uh, giving the, uh, the commentary or uh, reading the book uh, for us, <clears throat> she makes one thing very clear. Okay, this I wanted to make it clear to the group as well. This is not for a beginner. Okay, this faith, this mm -hmm. understanding is not for a beginner. 
okay so uh, i wanted to keep this at a very uh, very clear level so that uh, people don't uh, you know might wonder what is divine will and how is it all those things uh, it is it is not uh, easy for us to understand which means those who have been walking in the lord for quite some time uh, and uh, taking it to the next level of the spiritual walk is what uh, this particular um, you know the gift is been given to so we should look at it from that angle for us to understand it so an ordinary right. christian see for example a person who is not used to uh, the uh, you know the charismatic renewal suddenly here god spoke to me he will start wondering what well, god speaking to you you know what what nonsense are they talking about god talking to you you know so so this is that is what uh, happens in this divine will thing also so this is a this is not for the beginners this is not a basic level this is the next level growth maybe an advanced level growth which means you we need to understand it of many, many things from the uh, from that angle as jude said at the beginning about uh, the spiritual suffering you know we only know about the physical suffering of jesus that you know when he went through the uh, through calvary that is very clearly understood it's in black and white but what about the spiritual suffering that has to be under understood spiritually you know as much as jesus suffered mary mother mary also suffered that physically she did not go through any pain but spiritually she she really went through that is what uh, simeon said a wall will pierce your heart and just imagine a uh, uh, you know a sword will pierce a wall allah a sword will pierce sword will pierce your heart uh, just imagine physically a sword going through your heart that will it will, it will just cut open your heart it is the most painful thing so mother mary uh, spiritually went through that so there are there are two different uh, you know these are two different uh, things so we need to understand both uh, from uh, different levels so i just wanted to give you this uh, you know introduction um, as we progress uh, with this divine will yeah over to you jude sorry mm -hmm. thank you thank you for the jose in fact to quote uh, ms francis hogan so she calls this book of heaven is the university of spirituality it is we are not in the primary school or in the secondary school this is the university of we have gone to graduation post graduation and beyond that so that so it is not meant for beginners so and we in this group we have been for more than 700 days you know, knowing the word of god understanding it through different preachers who have, who have had different experiences so we definitely are in a position to appreciate this divine will living in the divine will as revealed to luisa pictoretta by jesus himself so the first thing uh, i think last we can self we said that the first thing is to sacrifice our self so this self will is something which is predominant in us so right from early childhood you know we oh, i want this mommy i want this please give it to me so so we have that self will very strong in us so and that has grown with us as we grow older he said no no nah, he is wrong he doesn't understand <laughs> this is the right thing so very often our will takes a, a firm grip on us so it is very difficult to get out of that and we need god's grace so the first step is to sacrifice our will and that doesn't come easy so we need god's grace then for that we need to go to john or uh, 155 so francis hogan always keeps repeating this to me remember john 155 what does jesus say john 155 says you can do nothing without me i am the vine and you are the branches you can do nothing without me and the corollary to that is what st paul wrote in philippians 4:30 so he says i can do all things through jesus christ who strengthens me so with jesus we, we can get over our will so what uh, jesus tells us that our will has to be fused with with god's will so the divine will is what is to be seen so when we are fully in god's will in divine will it, people will only see 
God's will. Our will is no longer seen. So as I said in the, uh, the previous week, that it keeps coming out very often. And it's very difficult in the initial stages. Our will starts, you know, emphasizing it's like, oh, no, 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 can't allow that. No, 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 this is what is right. But when it comes to divine will, we have to be like, so whatever we, even if we know for sure that the other person is saying something wrong, the word of God is something different, it is, we have to accept with love. And that love comes from the grace of God. So to accept whatever happens to us, whatever is said to us, as allowed by God, as very often, when we go through problems and difficulties, we say, as I was sharing last week, not say, oh, please let this happen for me this time. Please allow it. Let my will be done this time. From the next time onwards, your will can prevail. So we, when we are desperate, we can say, no, no, please allow this because I see that I have to get out of this. You see, what are the dire straits I am? So he knows, as yours was sharing yesterday. So he knows our prayer even before we utter it. What is there in our thoughts? What is there in our mind? He knows. So we don't have to worry. Once we come to that level, saying that, yes, Lord, your will is best for me. That is happen. So that's, that is a very, very advanced stage, a deep stage of uh, spirituality in divine will. And that comes very, very well uh, late. So... The first thing is, as I said, you to sacrifice the will. The first thing is to see that we, we, we desire very often. This uh, self-will is so strong that we only desire what we want. You know, please, I can't go there. You know, they don't even have a, uh, an AC. How can I sit there? It's difficult for me. I've heard people say in some places, no, I can't. that's a good place, but then it's difficult for me to be there. So we want our things, we want our way. As uh, somebody right, very uh, jokingly pointed out, that if you go to hell, you will find people who will tell you, we did it our way. We did it our way. And if you go to heaven, you will find people who say, we did it God's way. So, so that is the difference. So once you start insisting that you have to have your way, it's just not. Please allow me. Lord, please allow this. So once you start insisting on our way, it becomes the broad way which leads to perdition, to destruction. So the first thing is to desire that, yes, that thirst for doing God's way. So remember, Jesus said in John 7, 37, that if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. So what does he mean? So we have to desire to do what he is ready to give us. He's just waiting. And remember what he said while dying on the cross. I thirst. This is the motto which Mother Teresa has taken. He keeps it in all her chapels. Next to the crucifix, you'll find these two words. I thirst. One of the last few words of Jesus on the cross. I thirst. Thirst. So he's thirsting for our will to be achieved, for our will to be merged, to be fused with his will. And for that, he needs our cooperation because he has given us the free will and he will by no means transgress our will. He will no mean, there is no way that he will come and say that this is the best for you, I'll do it for you. No. So he will wait for us. So he gives a long rope. We say, no, sorry, not this time, next time, next time, please, I will have my way this time. He allows, he allows, gives a long rope. Until we say with our whole heart that, yes, Lord, this is what I want. Please give me your will. And here, Francis Hogan gives the example. When uh, Louisa Picaretta was shown, she was given a, a heavy dose of self-realization. So when we when we come to realize how small we are and how huge God is. So the example she gives very beautifully is that we are a speck of a speck of a speck 
yeah, no, no, nothing. You see, if you look for the in the universe, if you try to locate the Milky Way among the billions and billions of stars, if you try to locate the Milky Way, it is just a dot. And if you look for the solar system in that Milky Way, it is another small dot inside that dot. And if you look for our Earth, planet Earth, it is another small dot inside the solar system. So we are a speck, a speck, of a speck. We are. So that has to be understood. That he is so huge. He is immense. His immensity cannot be measured, cannot be understood by us. So we have to realize that we are nothing. So once we know that we have realized that, yes, Lord, I am nothing. You are a big thing. You know everything. You know me through and through. And you know the plan that you have for me, which you have made even before the foundation. Jeremiah 29, 11. That is that I know the plans for you, plans for your welfare, plans for your good, not for harm. So very often we think that this is the best for me. Why is not why is this not happening? I've been working for this so long. Why is this break? Why this sudden uh, misfortune? No. It is all planned. It is there. We only have to surrender. Say, Jesus, if you have allowed it, thank you. You know what is this. So, that is Philippians no, uh, 2, 6 to 10. See where Jesus tells Luisa that, yes, he wants us to realize that how much he came down, that huge, immense God, the maker of the whole universe, where we are only a speck, our Milky Way is a speck, and within that speck is our solar system, and within that speck is a speck our Earth. So the speck of a speck of a Earth, just nothing. So once we realize that, yes, Jesus came to become one of us, just because he wanted to bring heaven to us and take us with him. So this humility on this huge God, all powerful, all knowing, this God came to us. He simply suppressed his humility. When you read Philippians 2 6 and 10, can we, can anyone of us read that? With Philippians 2 6 to 10. Yeah. Philippians 2 6 to 10, who Philippians. being in the very, yeah. who being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, in death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and, uh, and on earth and under the earth. Thank you. Thank you. So there we see that, that immense, huge God, all powerful, ever living God. He became one of us, nothing. He became nothing because he wanted to. Make us something. Make us as good as them. So that has to be understood. That is the when uh, at the transfiguration in uh, when Peter, James, and John when they saw the glory of God revealed in Jesus, that was suppressed all all along. When they were shown the glory of Jesus, they were so very they couldn't face him. And Peter started talking things which, without understanding what he's saying, that is make three booths, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. You can stay here because having seen the glory of God, it's such a great beauty that we cannot cannot go away from. So that is why people who have near death experiences, when they go up to see God in His glory, come back. 
this is something they cannot explain in words. So that is what happens to Louisa Pickering. When she sees the, the magnificence, the glory of God, it is difficult to put it in words because words are insufficient. They just cannot say things which are beyond the realm of our understanding. So that is the glory to which God belongs, to which he, which he suppressed when he was here. And when he revealed it, there they were all in awe. And uh, this is what St. Augustine beautifully sums up. You know the life of St. Augustine? He led a wayward life. And his mother, St. Monica, was after him, always praying for him, praying for him for years and years. And finally, when the change came, so he said, Oh, beauty, so ancient, yet so new. Late have I come to know you. So when we come to realize the beauty of God and how much we owe him and how much we hurt him by our sin, we come to what is known as true reparation. So that is what Jesus wants. And our church, uh, Louisa, has been told that this sacrament of reconciliation is a great gift which the Catholic Church has. So we have to use that, the grace which comes. Many, many of our, some of our own relatives, I know, very close relations of ours. They have not gone to, for confession for years. And I try to tell them, they try to convince me, no, 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 but I confess to him directly. Why should I go for confession? You don't realize that this is something, a sacrament which has been instituted for our benefit. Just to wash ourselves continuously by the blood. And the graces which come by the going to confession, the more we go, so very often people say, what is the use I keep doing? doing the same thing I keep? Doesn't matter. The moment you keep going, it is washed. It is completely washed. We become a fresh creation. And for that, Jesus tells uh, Louisa Pecoretta that many people go to confession without getting absolution. The father might have said, yes, go, your sins are forgiven. Now say uh, three Hail Marys for your penance, but without reparation, without true contrition, there is no absolution. This is what Jesus tells Louisa Picaretta. And, you know, Louisa Picaretta made a seven hour confession. Just imagine making confession for seven hours. I remember uh, Brother. Uh, Johnson Sequera telling us that he made a three-hour confession when he accepted Jesus as the Lord, Lord and Savior. He made a three-hour confession, but Louisa Pecoretta made a seven-hour confession. Just sitting for seven hours and speaking of all our sins. How much time do we take to make our confession? A few minutes? Five minutes? Ten minutes? Very rarely it goes beyond ten minutes. So you have, I'm not saying that those who make uh, a five minute or 10 minute confession are not having true reparation, um, true contrition. It might have, we do not know, I'm not judging. The point is that our sins are so great. Are so, and Jesus tells me, it is, so, it is stinking. Hmm. The stench he has to bear. He's taking it on himself. By his wounds, we are healed. Remember Isaiah 53, 5. By his wounds, we are healed. By his blood, we are washed of all our sins. And this is a, an immense grace which we have to understand. So the, the more frequently we go for confession, the more grace we will receive to see ourselves as God sees us, as Jesus sees us. Otherwise, we try to say, okay, because... This is the, as uh, Pope John Paul II said, the, the greatest uh, evil in our days is that we are indifferent. We don't have that remorse for sin. How, how very shameful it is. How very 
painful it is for God. We don't realize that. He says, no, oh, it's okay, it's okay. You're living without marriage, living in a relationship, it's okay, it's fine. What is that? Many Catholics, and then laws are being passed in Catholic countries by parliamentarians who are Catholics. Mm. Allowing such things. Same-sex marriage, what not? Let's not talk about it. So these are the evils which Jesus was saying in the beginning of the 20th century and now into the 21st century. It is even worse, as Francis Hogan always says. This was 100 years ago. Jesus is talking about the, the worst century. 20th century was the worst. It is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. And we are surviving without getting burnt like Sodom and Gomorrah because of Jesus. Because of his sacrifice which is renewed every at every Mass. So the value of Mass, as Joe's often points out, the more often we go for confession, the more often we go for the Holy Mass and receive, we cleanse us. We grow in grace. We grow in living in the divine. And uh, and also, and also uh, recently I, 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 I got this conviction uh, from, I don't remember from where I read or heard the number of uh, each time when we go for mass, uh, if we have the habit of going for mass uh, as faithful as we can, uh, it is not just only <clears throat> an, uh, an effort that we are putting in to live a holy life on this earth, but the same mass is also being counted in heaven. The grace is also being you know, counted as, as a deposit in heaven. So more number of uh, the Eucharistic participation, more number of sacraments that we participate in terms of the uh, Holy Communion, uh, Holy Confession, all of these are counted uh, as our, uh, you know, in, in our account in heaven. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you go there, you have only attended one mass in a week. Uh, you will see, suddenly see, uh, you know, people uh, lining up with for it's seven masses a week. You know, there is a huge difference in the grace itself okay which uh, we cannot explain or understand uh, here on earth so that is one uh, conviction i got and i was I, I i used to wonder sometimes it does it make any that does it make sense to go for mass every day i do, i'm not as faithful as uh, uh, you know i used to be earlier faithful in the sense attentive and you know the my participation level has probably come down but uh, you know those are all human uh, thoughts but when Lord looks at our uh, desire to live a holy life, in spite of our weakness and our vulnerability, all these graces are counted in heaven as well. I just wanted to, you know, uh, support what uh, Jude said. The the value of these sacraments uh, only uh, give us an additional grace uh, push to our desire to live a holy life. Holy. Thank you, thank you, Brother Jose. You know, uh, when you come to the uh, later volumes, uh, Luisa Picaretta is told that this is divine currency. Every time you take something which is unpalatable, somebody scolds you, even though you are right, you know, your wife gets angry with you, you know, even though you have tried your best, you have done something, it's not acceptable. She you know, shouts at you. Then you don't respond. You take it as Jesus did, like the sheep before the one who is pleasing it, the shearer. So if you take it in Jesus without response, I, I tried to do it, but I couldn't. Ah, you always say that, but then I know for you, your work is important. Had it been your work, you would have done it. So, so this sort of thing when you hear. Whether it is from your, your wife or your family your, or a friend, somebody who, who didn't get what he wanted from you, who accuses you, even though you know that you have tried hard, but then it didn't work out. So if you don't give back to him, how do you say like that? No, you don't know how much I, I had to stand in the long queue. I had to wait for such a long time and I had to hear all those dirty words he had he spoke. I took all that for your sake. And you say that I have not done anything for you. 
So if you start saying that, it's gone. It's like the Pharisee standing before <laughs> and saying that, you know, I have fasted uh, three times a week. I give a uh, tithe. I do this. I do that. So don't try to argue or justify. You take it as Jesus said. Father, forgive them. So I always repeat that. This has become a stock phrase with me. Though. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So if I if I say, look, 2334, everybody knows it from now. So look, <laughs> 2334. Father, everybody is angry with me. I just say, look, 2334. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. So that sort of attitude when you get into it's very difficult. Initially, I, I was giving back, I was trying to justify myself. I said, no, no, you just don't understand how I have to struggle. You, you are just accusing me. You don't know what you're saying. Okay. But take it. Again, divine currency. So every time you put up with some difficulty, with something which you don't like, it is adding to your each other, like divine currency as uh, Jesus very beautifully puts it. So okay. that is yeah. Yes. In fact, uh, I just, just on that particular thing, 1 Peter 2, 10, and says, no, mm -hmm. when you do right and suffer for it, mm -hmm. yes. you uh, take it patiently, you have God's approval. You know, yes. exactly uh, what, uh, the, what Jude is telling about the currency, what Jesus told uh, Luisa Picarta. Picarate. It can be multiple instances. I have miserably failed on. I miserable not have. I miserably failed many many times. But uh, you know, as Jude is saying this, yeah, I'm, okay, I'm, okay. I'm encouraged uh, to you know tell this again to each one of us that you we get plenty of opportunities to suffer unjustly. Okay, this unjust suffering uh, is something which we should look at it as uh, Jude rightly said about the heavenly currency. You know, when you look at it uh, from that angle, uh, today Bitcoin is not something which uh, is uh, as <laughs> as clear as our currency, which uh, which we all trade every day, which all we use every day. You know, so uh, similarly, you don't know the value at this point in time. Uh, we will know the value only once we reach heaven. But uh, you know, definitely uh, the Word of God substantiates this very clearly in one Peter two um, twenty. When you do right and suffer for it. I suffer for it, you take it patiently. And that word patiently is very important. Uh, you take it patiently, you have God's approval. So this uh, comes in as a very big uh, you know, consolation for all those who are going through uh, difficulties, being uh, you know, cornered by others, being condemned by others, being judged by others, criticized by others, ignored by others. You know, uh, So take it as an opportunity and uh, handle it patiently. Uh, we will have God's approval. Absolutely, because it's uh, and every day we get opportunities. Just uh, the other day, at the signal, uh, traffic signal, the green had come for our side. I was about to move from the other side. Uh, bike passed at great speed, and the one was sitting in the pillion. The one was sitting at the back. Door is handed to him as if I am in the wrong. I mean, like you. <laughs> and I said, Father, forgive him. <laughs> he knows not what he's doing. So I didn't get angry at me because with this training, this uh, Bible study for 700 odd days, you know, that has brought about a change. Yes, I am able to. Otherwise, I would have said, you idiot, you are in the wrong way. <laughs> you are accusing me. <laughs> so it's very easy to give back. And uh, yeah, thank you. Somebody has put it up, 1 Peter 2.20. So that is his thing, you see. And God always sees what is something which is done quietly, secretly. So, when you give arms, let not your left hand know what your right hand is giving, what your right hand know what your left hand is giving. You see, that's all because your father sees what you're, you're doing, what is there in your mind. You don't want others to know. And here in our parish also, and many other places you find, when we have a parish feast, and the, the priest reads out the the uh, thanksgiving at the end. You know? People will come to him and say, oh, Father, you, I did this. I arranged that thing. You have not mentioned it and when you gave the list of people you thanked. You didn't thank me. So this sort of thing is there in all of us. It's, it's uh, a human weakness. And we have to get over it. 
by God's grace. Yes, that has happened to me. But you took something much bigger. You suffered so much more, much bigger than this for my sake. So thank you. Thank you for giving me this small gift. So we have to welcome such things. So when we start looking for such things, welcome them. It, it becomes, you know, a way of life. Otherwise, it's very difficult. The other ways we start complaining. Then the moment we start accusing, blaming others, oh, and uh, uh, Francis Hogan very nicely puts it that very often, uh, people go for confession and say, uh, I did this, I did this because so-and-so said like this to me, I had to give back. Uh, I did this because somebody did. That is, that is not a confession. No. So she said that it's the saints who are the ones who make good confession. Because they say that, yes, I, did. I am in the wrong. As David says in Psalm 51, which has been coming for our readings these few, few days. No, I did something wrong. I sinned against you. Against you alone, no, I sinned. So once you realize that, yes, God, I have sinned. In spite of all the graces you gave me, all the Bible study I've gone through, I have sinned, I fell. Forgive me. Give me your grace. So that sort of approach we have to. And the second, yes. So that is uh, something. And the second thing is, yes, obedience. So we have to look to Jesus, yes. I do nothing without the, seeing what the Father does. What the Father does. The Son can do nothing other than what the Father does. And everything Jesus did, that is why he used to have that, as Jose was pointing out, in spite of all the busy schedule he was going through, the heavy demands on his time, he used to wake up early in the morning and have communion with his father, have that prayer time. So that communication link we have to have in order to grow in living in it. So in order to become fully grown in the divine way, we have to have that constant communion with as uh, Sister uh, Greta was sharing yesterday, in spite of all the difficulty when she went to go or somewhere, so she was able to keep in touch with God. That, that touch is necessary. If we lose that, we lose, we, we slowly slip away from the divine world into our own world, and we fall into all sorts of problems. So then comes, yes, uh, then the stripping, the stripping. This is in uh, Hebrews 12, 1 to 10. So, if somebody can read Hebrews 12, 1 to 10. You need not be 1 to 10, also just the first few verses. So, how we need to, to grow in holiness, to have a, a true relationship with God. We have to give up our attachments to human beings. Is anybody ready with uh, Hebrews? Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 1 to 10. Is it? Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against... Okay. Yeah, thank, you. That's enough. thank you very much. So this is the... We have to strip ourselves of our attachments. So our attachments to worldly things. We, we get attached to it. That's normal, quite, quite natural when we live in this world. So in order to strip ourselves of these attachments, it, we need again God's grace. So very often we say that, yes, this is something I cannot give up. And so I, can, I can't do not do without this, those people who are addicted to drinks or to uh, smoke, or any of us who have any anything which is we consider to be precious to us. This is something I can't be without. I need it. Uh, so this, so to strip ourselves of this attachment to human beings. In fact, um, 
in the early days when she was just in her teens, uh, she was 17 years old, Louisa Picaretta was spending some time with her family. And Jesus reprimanded her, saying that you're spending too much time with your family members, and that fills your heart with dust. Just imagine. Just imagine. A teenager is talking to her parents or to her siblings. And Jesus says, you know, your, your heart is covered with dust because of such conversation. Spend time with me. So, now this, this is something which was specific to Louisa Pickett. Yeah. That sort of calling was hers, specifically yeah. for her. So, yeah. we have to understand that just by talking to our, our spouses or your, our children, we, we are uh, we are missing or we are moving away from God. No. So yeah. this is something special. No, no, the point I am trying to make is that the importance of this to me. So yeah. the extent to which the calling, you know, we have our own family. So we need to spend time with them. We are, we are duty bound. We are obliged to take care of them. We need to talk to them. We need to spend time with them. But the point is we have to have as our base, yes. Yeah. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, Benny in, uh, in his first book, Good Morning Holy Spirit, uh, shares a similar experience. And the first okay. day of his ministry, he was just very new to the ministry. First day of the ministry, uh, he, there was uh, there was a massive healings and, uh, you know, uh, uh, deliverance, etc. And that uh, evening he went out uh, for uh, uh, dinner, a lunch or dinner with uh, a relative of his. And as uh, and he went there, he was staying in that house, and he was praying. And uh, suddenly uh, they called for a meal. Uh, he came down as he was eating the meal. Uh, he felt a strong, uh, you know, sense calling of the Holy Spirit. Go and pray. Go and pray. And uh, he ignored it. A couple of times it happened to him, but he continued to ignore it. He said, you know, if I go and pray, what will the family think? You know, I mm -hmm. spend time with uh, I will spend time with uh, them, and he continued to spend time with them for quite some time. And evening he went uh, and he you know prayed and he slept. Next next day for that session, next session, the Holy Spirit there was no signs and wonders because and because of the previous day, law more people came, and absolutely it was a dry meeting. So that evening he asked the Holy Spirit, why did you not show up? Uh, then he said, uh, you know, you have not yet learned uh, the price which I had asked, I wanted you to pay uh, for this mm -hmm. ministry. So as uh, Jude uh, very rightly said, this is a very specific calling. Okay, don't ever consider it as a universal law uh, mm -hmm. because that, that, will, that will give us a wrong impression. You know, mm -hmm. tomorrow we will not be responsible <laughs> if you don't talk to your spouse and time, spend time with your children. That is not the thing. So there is a there is a level of calling, uh, also which we need to consider. So each one, everyone are not called uh, equally in this uh, in this uh, uh, you know in this area. Each one has got a, a calling, a very specific calling. According to the calling, we respond. That is uh, the message. Thanks, Jude. Continue, please. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful uh, example you gave of Benny. Yes. Uh, so this is something. No, the point is that. Uh, we have to remember that we have to love the Father. Again, Deuteronomy uh, 6, uh, 6, 4 to 10. So love the Lord. Rejoice. Uh, listen, O Israel. Your, the Lord your God is the one God. And you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. So, so that is something basic which Jesus also quoted when he was asked which is the greatest commandment. So, yes, the first commandment is, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul. So what is important is hope. So when we give everything to God, what is left? So, so Jesus is trying to point out, it, that was of course for Louisa and for people like Benny, Benny Hinn who have special call. So it doesn't mean that when you spend time with your family, you're, you know, uh, you're sinning. No, definitely not. So let us not uh, get that sort of a wrong uh, impression. So the point is that the more, yes, thank you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord of God is one God. And you shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, all your being in some of the old translations, with all your being. So, so 
So we we belong to him. We are his. So, so the, the, the once we love him with all our heart. So we have to have time for him. But when we have time only for other things and not for him, and even though the promptings were there, as in the case of Benny Hinn, the prompting, please go to pray, go to you know, what will others think, what will my family think, what will my friend think. So when we start having that sort of a thing, do not give enough time to God. Then we are moving away, moving away from God. So that is something which we have to, so that is the stripping which, which uh, uh, Louisa Picaretta talks about in her book. So stripping ourselves of these worldly attachments. So uh, that example, very often when that uh, reading comes, the gospel reading, Martha and Mary, when Jesus goes for a meal with them, Mary sits at, a, as, at his feet and listens to him. Well, Martha is busy preparing the lunch or dinner. So she comes to Jesus and says, do you not care? You know, my sister is just sitting with you. And I am doing all the work. So what does Jesus say? Martha, Martha, she has chosen the best portion and it will not be taken away from her. So very often when my wife accuses me, oh, you're not helping me out. You're just sitting, you're getting the food on the table. You're happy with that. You're not talking about how it is coming to you. You're not helping me in marketing. You're not helping me in doing anything. So I said, I simply say, see, I am Mary and you are Martha. <laughs> so, so, that, so that sort of thing is something which we need to understand. Very often after that gospel reading, every time we used to have an argument. Oh, what is Jesus trying to say? So my wife will always argue. That, no, no, no. Jesus, how, how would you? So supposing I also sit along with you, how, how will you eat? So... This sort of argument goes on. So, uh, uh, yes, some things, juice. Uh, no, 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 you, you, don't, you don't need to put, read it now. I just put it uh, for the benefit of everyone. Yeah. Okay. So, so what what we have in mind, what we think as, a, as the proverb, there's a saying that what a man thinks, so he becomes, so he is. So when we keep thinking that, yes, Lord, I have spent a lot of time away from you. I'm sorry I couldn't spend much time with you. So that used to happen when I was in service. Now, of course, I'm free, I'm retired. I have a little more time for God. In those days, when I was serving, I just used to be, I couldn't go for daily mass also in many places. So I used to do the daily readings, the Bible diary. And by the time I reach office, it's all forgotten. And sometimes two or three days because of some um, uh, very busy days in office, I used to miss the readings also. Then I after two, three days, I used to tell, sorry, I couldn't find time for you. Please excuse me. So give me more time so that I can spend time with you. So this is after that sort of attitude we should have that, yes, I have not had enough time. With. Because that is like, you know, as somebody said very nicely, that it is like a, a battery charge for the mobile. So when we, the charge goes out, we can't use it. So we have to keep on giving it the charge. And that charge we need for our life is God's presence, God's presence. So the more we go to him with all our problems, with all our difficulties, yes, I try to do your will, Lord, but sometimes I couldn't. Please help me out. I want to live in your divine will. So, so what we need to repeat is this, not my will, Lord, but your will. Be done. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. This is what Francis Hogan said. Keep repeating it as often as you can, as, as uh, uh, an ejaculatory prayer. Keep on saying it. And you'll find that you'll be getting the graces unknowingly to do his way with, with greater will. So, I, think, I don't know how far we have gone. Uh, we have a long way to go. But still, where are we? How, what is the time now? Uh, do we have any any questions, any, any observations, any comments, any sharing? Yeah, so I just put it, uh, what somebody asked, what is divine will? So I just put it, uh, it's, it's, it's not a devotion, it is a way of life. Yeah, return to us following the fall of Adam, who initially was given the gift uh, from God. The return of this gift is to enable mankind to return to the way Adam lived before the fall. So divine will, spiritual divine will spirituality is the crown and completion of all spirituality. 
That's what yesterday I was talking. I was telling the biggest miracle for us to happen in our life is the divine will. You know, if we live in the divine will, that there's nothing beyond that. So you, we need to be, we need to have a great deal of spirituality behind us, and then you will become the beginner in the divine will. So it's not as we said in the beginning. It is not just for a. It's not a. It is not uh, for uh, beginners. It is the next level growth. So we need to understand that, uh, and then uh, you know, desire for it. Yes. So that desire, and the next step is humility. So yes. without humility, as we said in uh, Philippians two six, the how God Himself, the All Knowing, the All Powerful, the All Might. So He became one of us, a speck of a speck of a speck. Yeah. He became one of us just to save us. Right. So that love we have to understand, and that humility which Jesus, we have to if we call ourselves true Christians, we have to have that sort of humility. It's very very difficult, and without His grace, it's just not possible. So once we seek His grace and say that yes, God, you know how weak I am, you know how easily I fall, so give me your strength, your grace, help me to love you with all my. I keep loving things other than you. I keep getting attached to things, so those which keep me away from you. But still, you can bring. Give me your grace. I want. This is something I desire. But that basic thing is that desire. When we have that desire, that thirst, then we keep on asking. We will find that unknowingly we will be moving into living in the divine. And every time. We fall every time. This even a renial sin puts us away from it. So that takes us to a uh, Hebrews, where uh, the, right, the author of Hebrews says that nothing unholy, nothing unclean, can go to heaven. So that is why you have purgatory. And Jesus tells you to a ticket at that. Right? Nine out of ten people, and this was in the last century. Nine out of ten people go to purgatory. That's very scary. So, yes. So, Joe had taken a, less, a session on uh, indulgences. So, if we go to that again and again and see what are the indulgences which are available to us. So, these are things which we can use to go, grow in the divine and to gain divine currency as uh, Jesus told Louis. To gain the more divine currency we have with us, the richer we are. So store up riches in heaven. This is what we are told. We have to store up riches in heaven. It's easy to store up riches on earth, to build up a big bank balance. But then that doesn't help us. We can't take it with us. So we have to store up riches. And this divine currency is by going for these uh, plenary indulgences, by reading the Bible. All those things which Jesus has put up already, it's there available for us. We have to just try to... Uh, see them, understand them, and practice them as much as we can. So I think uh, I will stop here for today. Uh, okay, any questions, any clarifications or points which uh, anybody wants to contribute? But I'm very, we are very glad at the fact that this topic has generated, uh, you know, quite a bit of interest. Uh, uh, and uh, I'm happy that, uh, you know, so many people are attending. And we also see some 25, 30, 50 people watching on the YouTube also. So thank you all for the support. It is very encouraging. And this uh, topic, uh, we will sail through this uh, together. And uh, also pray that God may uh, give into our hearts the desire to live in the divine will. As uh, very clearly uh, Francis Hogan says, it is not a devotion. It is a... It is, a, it is a lifestyle. It is a way of life. So if we if we at least have this in back of our mind, okay, I wanted to ask God before I take a decision. Before I do something, I wanted to ask God. Or I wanted to do according to what the word of God says. Mm -hmm. So these things, if we are able to register in the back of our mind, even if we fall, we will be able to, you know, bounce back quickly. Okay, so that is some, that is an objective. What is the first objective? that we desire to live in the divine will. The second level is that we God takes us uh, to the divine will and uh, you know help us 
to remain uh, in his will, uh, in the center of his will. Yeah. Okay, so we will close it uh, for the evening. Uh, I want the Spinner Indulgences list. Yeah, the, so, the Indulgences talk is available on the uh, YouTube. I will share it with you, brother uh, Francis. Thank you, thank you. Brother. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So brother, that Indulgences, okay. would you share with me also, please, Joe? Yeah, yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah I will do that. Brother, right. Joe, yeah. I just have a quick concern. I wanted to post a video a small clip from the chosen. It's about same based on the will of divine will. Can I send it to you? I don't know how to post it. I'll send it to you. Yeah, yeah, you send it to me. Send it to me. No problem. Okay. It's mm -hmm. an awesome one. Just on healing. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Thanks, brother Jude, okay. Jude and brother Jude. You were very good today. Very Thank good. You. Thank you for the teaching. God bless. Thank you. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. So we'll close it. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So tomorrow we continue with the Holy Spirit series by uh, Brother Anthony. Okay. Thank you. See you all tomorrow. Have a bl blessed Sunday. Bye-bye. See you.